Okay, we're back here on mat three. And this is the absolute semi-final in the women's black belt division between Gabby Pisania in the white gi on the bottom, taking on Melissa Stryker in the black gi on top. Now, Jake, I think most people at this stage are familiar with Gabby Pisania. She is a very well-known competitor, of course, a uh, black belt world champion and one of the most dominant figures in women's jiu-jitsu, oh, without d doubt. Don't, 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 uh, don't forget, first place IBJJF World Championship in her weight and the absolute. Of all of her uh, matches at Black Belt, she has lost six. She has 63 wins and six losses at Black Belt. And her opponent, M uh, Melissa Cueto, World champion. champion. World champion as well, 2021 IBJJF World Champion. So this is a, a very, very high profile match. Gabby Pisani on bottom in the whites from in-fight jiu-jitsu in Rio de Janeiro. She is the number one seed in this absolute division bracket and with good reason. She won the absolute division here at the Pan Championships last year after actually losing to Yada Suarez in, the, uh, in her weight division final. Basically, her and Yara go back and forth, both in the super heavyweight division, of course, these competitors, and they often just take turns in, in kind of the, the medals. But it's, uh, it's amazing to see how they push each other in, in tournaments all over the world. And then, let's not forget, you have the big names such as Melissa Stryker and others who are chasing after them and also trying to establish dominance in these divisions. But Yara is already in the final of the absolute. She beat Maria Mawiasak in the uh, semi-final and is awaiting the winner of this match. And we'll see that go down tomorrow. So Yara Suarez already in the final. Man, uh, we, get to, we get to see it again. It's awesome. And so the high level jiu-jitsu being displayed by the ladies is just so incredible. It's getting, it's getting better and better. Front runners like Gabby Pisania pulling out incredibly intricate guard games and tight She's a passing. a great technician, right? Amazing. Amazing technician. Just watching her work at the 2021 IBJJF Worlds and having the privilege to commentate one of her matches was just, it was almost like I learned a lot that day as well. Very patient guard play at the moment from Pisania. Very comfortable. Uh, one thing I've always noticed while watching Gabby Pisania compete is that she always appears so calm. Her face really changes in expression. You really see her exerts. You really see her uh, in any kind of pressure or, or, or struggling in any position. She's always so calm. She's always in such control. And it's not to say that she can't be beaten, as you, as you mentioned there. It's pretty rare that we see that happen but I think that her composure in these matches is one of the defining traits absolutely and I think that it's important uh, that you stay calm in this position this, and, I, and I like to sort of mention whenever I watch these matches and I, and I am able to call them I like to mention that it's very important to take a lesson from the competitors that you're watching and that, we, that we're talking about because if you notice Gabby Pisani, you just brought up the point, like she's so calm and she's so collected, and it's because she knows what the options are. Like right here, you see her wrapping a, uh, a lapel guard. She's used to great effect. It's understanding what's happening to you and understanding what you need to do to react to it. And that comes from drilling. That comes from being in the situations. It comes from the incredible experiences she's had competing. So the more time you spend on the mat, the more you're going to be exposed to the different possibilities that can happen to you in any given situation. And you will be eventually, hopefully, assuming you're improving, as calm as someone like Gabby Pisani is. I had a uh, very interesting conversation with a number of people this weekend, and, and, and this is a theme that came up again and again, is that athletes and competitors such as Gabby Pisani, who is only about 20 years of age, she doesn't just have 10 years of high-level jiu-jitsu experience. She has 10 years of competition experience. So they often say in jiu-jitsu, it takes about 10 years to get a black belt. That's a thing that you hear quite often, right? But that usually is applied for somebody who trains recreationally as a hobby. Now, these athletes that we're watching right here have been competing 
Oh my goodness. At a high level since an early age, and they arrive at 19, 20 years of age, fully formed as world-class competitors. And that is exactly what we're seeing here from Gabi Pisania. This very dangerous position here. There she moves over, oh. almost gets the mount. Nice recover there from Melissa Stryker. But you see that Pisania, again, her composure, her control in that sequence enabled her to score very, not easy sweep. That's a, that may be the wrong word. But I would it say, looked almost effortless. Well, she wrapped the lapels, like I was saying. But I want to take a minute to say how the same quality that we were just describing in Gabby Pisania was in all the way there with uh, Melissa Stryker as well. I mean, look at how she timed perfectly. She knew exactly yes. when she was going to let go of the lapel, and she pushed the knee, didn't give up the four points, and effectively, she's still in the match. She's in half guard. She's down by an advantage, and if she's able to sweep or make something happen, she could be right back in this match. And that pivotal moment, that one second that she took to stay calm and wait for the right opportunity, now she's defending a guard pass, but kind of this top reverse half guard is a very difficult position to be caught in. It's a, uh, it looks like she's moments away from passing. It, it, this is not deep half guard in the traditional sense for striker. No, but and this is right here. But she a uses beautiful. That what she was doing was taking her knees away to switch the leverage. That was really nice technical work. No, absolutely, and as I said before, it's like both of these women are so patient they're so knowledgeable, and they're in the moment, and it comes from how much competitive experience. I mean, these are we're talking about last year's world champions right now. Like, these right. are the best women in the world going against each other. Uh, it's really incredible stuff. And now, though, Melissa Stryker evening the advantages up. She pulls guard, hope, looking to potentially s tie this up. And if she's able to tie this up with some sort of sweep and avoid this knee cut, Pisania has a two-point lead. There's less than two and a half minutes remaining on the official clock. Cueto could come back and, and, and be in a position to win this match, because right now, it's even on advantages. So a sweep will even the score. Anything better than that will put her in the lead. But with two, and a half, well, two minutes remaining in the match, roughly, and Gabi Pisania on top in a very nice Near leg drag position. Oh, that's going to be a difficult, that's going to be hard to come back from. Oh, and you saw all that whole situation that just happened. Uh, uh, Pisania lifted up the leg and threw that underhook immediately as soon as she realized how Melissa Stryker wanted to get up on a single. You saw her feeding the lapels, you saw her trying to create that angle to get up on a single, and Gabby took, nipped it in the bud before it even happened. She said, I'm going to throw a, a preemptive pass here. Pisania's grips as well. Look at the way that she has control of the collar here. I feel like Stryker is not that far away from coming up here. She could, Oh my yes, goodness. She does, evens the score. This is a big situation for Melissa Stryker. If she's able to even get close to passing now, and this is a very, you know, Gabby Pisani needs to be careful because though she, now the score is tied and one could argue that maybe she had a control, better control positions for the match, it's not safe to put decisions in the Absolutely hands of judges. Not. No, we've seen that many times that an athlete thought that they were comfortably in the lead. Now one minute left. I would say a very important last minute for this match. Winner will go on to face Yara Suarez tomorrow in the final of the Women's Absolute. The official scoreboard does say two points to two. Uh, apologies that ours says, says 2-0. As we say that, Gabby Pisania looking to try to change the angle, threaten an armbar there. You can see in the background on the TV screen the score even and seconds remaining, 25 seconds remaining on the clock. Score is even. And I would say if, if uh, Melissa Stryker wants to really nail it in to win this match, she's going to need to get really busy, really active in these lives and really make it convincing to end the match on a high note. Well, five seconds remaining. I think it's a guarantee that this will go to a decision now. And very interesting to see how the judges score this. So a reminder that the way this decision works. in favor of Gabby Pisania, two judges to one, call it for the reigning Pan and World Absolute Champion. And she will now...